Hey, I'm going to talk about something different today, and I'm doing it with the hope and the aim that one day it may help someone realise that they are not as alone as they feel. My name is Jason, and this is my eating disorder story. For as long as I can remember, my relationship with food has been less than perfect. I was raised on the idea that food is everything. If something really, really great happens, then you celebrate with food. And if something really, really bad happens, then you deal with it with food. It wasn't until I grew up that I noticed that other people didn't treat food with the same gravity that I did. So when I went through quite significant trauma... Food was my blanket for many years, through my defining years. And when I came out of those defining years, the main definition I had for life was food. And then I started tying it to my self-worth and ate more because I didn't feel very good about that. And the eating, it makes you look and feel worse. And to deal with that, you eat some more. And I always knew there was something wrong about that. And in recent years, I have been able to recognise and accept that behavioural pattern as a binge eating disorder, or BED. When you look up eating disorders online, you find a lot of information about anorexia, bulimia, two awful disorders. But for me, someone who clearly has a disordered way of looking at food, they don't necessarily represent me. So where do I stand? The amount of shame that came with that question was lonely. Because the more you do it, the more you hide it. Except with an eating disorder, you can't hide it. You wear your mistakes on your sleeve. Or on both sleeves if you start wearing multiple layers to cover up the body that you are so ashamed of being inside of. Shame doesn't work. You can't reconcile that kind of shame and self-hate with happiness and self-love. Or at least I couldn't. Because I was so ashamed, I didn't want to see anyone. Cancelling people became the norm. Not doing things became the norm because at the end of the day, what was I missing out on? Another opportunity to feel utterly exposed and ashamed and vulnerable in my own body. We're all told how we're supposed to look, women more than anyone, perpetuated idealistic, unrealistic images of a person who must clearly have value because of their weight and how they look. As a man, I don't deal with half of that. But as a man with body image issues, when I came to realise what I was suffering with, I found there was very, very little resource. I would spend nights over weeks, lay on the floor full of nothing but hatred for who I was. Desperately trying to find some sort of help, some kind of support, and some kind of explanation for what I was feeling. Something that would help me feel even a tiny bit less shame, desperate to hear a story like my own. A story that said, I wasn't the only one. And when it's not out there, and you realise that you are alone, you hide it some more. My message today to anyone who is suffering with something that makes them feel uniquely, incomparably alone, is that you're not. You're just not. And I know that sounds ridiculous and may even feel impossible, but that is because of the shame. When you convince yourself that what you are dealing with is so shameful that it needs to be hidden from everybody, you give that feeling power. You take away any opportunity to learn that there is someone else out there suffering with a similar thing to you. And you are bloody beautiful. You have value. And sometimes the only person telling you that you don't is you. But you're being lied to. I know that now. It's been about a year since I chose to tell someone about what I was going through, and it's been about eight months since I started seeing a professional about it. And it's been about six months since we started trying to find new habits that would break that cycle of binge, shame, hate, and repeat. And, for the last three months, for the first time in eight years, I've eaten three meals a day, in front of people. For the first time in my career, I take lunch breaks. I allow myself to be seen eating, doing something that once brought me so much shame. I laugh, I do things, and I allow myself the liberty to love who I am. I know that this battle is one that I'm going to have to fight for the rest of my life, but it doesn't mean I'm not going to fight it. I'm worth fighting for, and you're worth fighting for. There hasn't been any cure. 
there have been no easy steps from where I was to where I am now, but there was the first step. And to me, it's the most important one. It's that as impossible and shameful as it might seem, tell somebody. I'm not ashamed anymore. I'm a survivor. I am a fighter. And I choose life. Thank you. I'm going to go make a brew now.